Well, hello everyone, it's me again. Uh, you're very, very fortunate to have me doing Psalm videos for two days in a row. Obviously, yesterday's was Psalm 54, so absolutely no prizes for guessing what the psalm is today. We're going to be looking uh, at Psalm 55 together. As you can see, I haven't even bothered to change my shirt, um, but don't worry about that. It's not as if I'm filming these back to back. So uh, I'm not going to read out Psalm 55 because it's quite a long one and I want to keep these videos a little bit tighter than we have been doing. So I'm going to say a prayer and then feel free to pause the video and read Psalm 55 to yourself. But let's pray. Lord, um, please help us to see beautiful things in your word. Please show us more of Jesus and show us more of how we can love him and be like him. Amen. This is where you pause the video and uh, read Psalm 55. I can still see you in the room. Hello. Uh, now for a bit of help uh, understanding this psalm and, and hopefully um, helping you guys understand it as well, I've turned to my big oh, ESV study Bible, which is a really thick book. Um, it's got some, I don't know if you can see, it's quite sunny. It's got some really helpful, <laughs> it's got some really helpful kind of notes. You can see it on that page. Helpful notes at the bottom. And they just kind of commentate and analyse um, what's happening in the text. And I thought um, one of these is really, really helpful to help us understand some of the context for Psalm 55. Um, so now that you've read the psalm, and if you haven't, pause the video and actually read it, it is important. Um, I'm going to read out this little paragraph uh, about some context on Psalm 55. Here we go. Like many other individual laments, um, this psalm prays for God's help against dangerous enemies who hate the faithful. So already we can see it's quite similar to yesterday's Psalm 54. There is a unique twist here, though, in Psalm 55. The danger comes from betrayal by a close friend. Verses 13 to 14 and verses 20 to 21, where you can see that clearly. Who had seemed a fellow pilgrim on the path of life. I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to read out verse 13 and 14 for us. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together. Within God's house we walked in the throng. And verse 20 and 21. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smooth as butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Some people, the paragraph goes on to say, deny that David could be the author of this psalm because there's no clear instance of such betrayal in the recorded life of David. But that misses the point. Uh, these psalms are hymns, not merely autobiography. Not everything in the psalms necessarily relates to a, a, an actual factual event. Um, like with many songs, um, they can just be about uh, how we respond to certain situations or how we should respond to certain situations. David has provided this psalm for God's people to sing under this kind of duress. Also, as we're coming on to look at in focus in the next few weeks, um, David was betrayed by his son Absalom in 2 Samuel 15 and 16. And by his counsellor Ahithophel, Ahithophel, Ahit, a big A in 2 Samuel 15 and 16. I don't know his name. But actually, as we look at the psalm, let's just compare verse 1 uh, of Psalm 55 to verse 1 of Psalm 54. Psalm 54. Oh God, save me by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Oh God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Psalm 55 begins really similar, similarly. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint. And I moan. Both Psalm 54 and Psalm 55, David is struggling. He's begging the Lord um, to hear him as he calls out in his times of trouble against his enemies. And he goes to God and gives God everything he has. One of the things I don't think we're great at is expressing ourselves in poetry in our culture. And yet David and some of the Psalms are absolutely masterclasses of emotive and genuine uh, poetry. How can you read verses four, five, six, 
and not actually think this is a guy who's really, really feeling this stuff really deeply and is pouring his heart out as he expresses it to the Lord. Verse four, my heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me. Horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. He's clearly troubled. He's clearly stressed. And he's clearly longing for escape. He's desperate, isn't he? He's desperate because of the situation he's in. Well, we might know exa- not exactly um, what that situation is, um, but as, as we saw from verse 13, 14, 20 and 21, clearly he's been betrayed by a friend. His companion, his familiar friend, someone he's close with has turned against him. I don't know if you can empathise with that. I'm sure we all can to some degree. What is it like when a friend lets you down or betrays you? Maybe your friends at, at your orchestra or your scout group or your football group and then you go to school together and they treat you completely differently. Maybe you get on really, really well in Rooted or Focus or The Forge. Yeah, actually, when you go to school or you go to your football club or whatever, you see them in a different situation. They don't want anything to do with you. They treat you completely differently. Maybe that's how we treat each other um, when people turn up to church. Whatever the situation is, it's never nice to realise that someone you thought was a friend was actually working against you or didn't care for you or betrayed you for, for their own gain or for something else. That's why David's in such distress. What are we to do in those situations? Well, the answer isn't rocket science. We talked about it yesterday. That although it might not be hard to work out what we do in those situations, it can be really hard to actually do it. We're called to cast our burdens on the Lord. Verse 22. The singer, David, uh, addresses each of his fellow singers. Verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord. He will sustain you. And the reason that we can do that, the reason that we can go to God and cast our fears and our anxieties, our troubles, our issues, our sins and our faults on the Lord, is that he can be trusted to bring judgment. Now, judgment might be something we're not entirely comfortable with. Um, Who is God that he should be able to judge us? Well, if we remember back in Psalm 8, it's a really good question. Who is God uh, that he could be able to judge us? Ah, it's not Psalm 8. Sure, it's Psalm 8. That's awkward. It's one Psalm. Mental. I'm going to Google it. What is man that you are mindful of him? Is Psalm 8? Ah, I found it. I found it. Don't worry. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for. And later on, verse 9, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The Lord is the creator of all things, the creator of you and the creator of me. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth, the stars, the sun, the sky, the birds of the field and the beasts of the sea. This is all God's. We live in God's universe and each breath we take is by God's command. He created us and we rejected him, turned against him in our own way. Who is God that he can judge? He is God and he is the judge. Judgment is a good thing. Who wants to live in a world without judgment, without punishment for bad things, without reward for good things? And when judgment is just and fair and right, who are we to argue? And David faithfully prays for judgment to come about. We see that, don't we? Particularly well in verse 23. But you, O God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. Here's a hard truth. There are two ways to live, and there are two places to spend eternity in. One of them is great. One of them is full of sunshine and joy and peace and prosperity and health and happiness and comfort and friends 
and love and kindness and good games and mint songs and just is perfection because that place is called heaven. And that's where God will bring the people who want to go there. That's where, if you want to spend eternity with God through the blood of Jesus, that's what it looks like. If we turn around in this life and say, Lord, I don't want to live in a relationship with you, God will say, okay, don't. And he warns us what that will be like. It will be like a pit of destruction, full of blood and treachery. If we want to live with God, we will. And if we don't, we won't. I can't say or see fairer than that. God's judgment is just. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? We've got a choice to make. David makes it. He, verse 23, will trust in you. He knows, verse 22, that God will not permit the righteous to be moved. He will keep those who are his. Judgment is real. Judgment should be terrifying. Heaven is better. How could we possibly not want to spend eternity there? It's a hard truth. It's also a glorious truth. Because none of us deserve to get to heaven, do we? We're not good enough. We don't deserve to be there. And yet God offers to take us anyway. Offers to give us what we don't deserve. And not give us what we do deserve. Maybe that's given you something to think about today. Read back over Psalm 55. Maybe pray. We talked about prayer yesterday. Maybe just ask God. Um, just, if he, just to talk to you. Just to tell you um, the truth. And to help you see it for yourself. I'm going to pray a really short prayer now, but please feel free to carry on praying in your own hearts and in your own time about Psalm 55 and what we've seen in it. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be people who see you clearly, who see the truth of the gospel and who see uh, the truth of who we are and what we've done, as well as the truth of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Help us to find our way back to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be your people and to be faithful to the end and enjoy eternity in heaven with you rather than the terrifying and dark prospect of going into that pit of destruction. Help us, Lord, in your love, not to choose that way. Amen.